Huzzah! And welcome to Beefy Time. I'm Beefy by name and nature and you should be reading The Flash. Now ever since DC's rebirth this comic has been amazing. This has just been like a massive roller coaster ride. Roller coaster of emotions if you will. This is primarily because of the multiple layers to this story. You have essentially the tale of three flashes. The first of which is the original Wally West. Now those of you who are longtime DC fans know that when it came to Flashpoint and the New 52, Wally West was just not seen anymore. Now this is primarily, well, I'm making pure assumptions, but I'm guessing that this was a creative choice because they ended up rebooting with a di completely different Wally West. And the original Wally West was a beloved character. Like people genuinely love this dude. He's the kid Flash. He was like a, one of the original, well he might not be the original Teen Titan, but he was a Teen Titan. But yeah, the poor dude was just suddenly written out of canon and it's, it's quite sad because he's, He's genuinely interesting, but lucky for him and fans of Wally West, Josh Williamson has written him back in somehow. So it turns out that Wally was actually trapped inside the Speed Force. The Speed Force is what gives pretty much almost all speedsters their power. Wally was basically running around Central City trying to find someone who would remember him and he's basically been wiped from everyone's memory. And it was quite sad, but Barry being the hero that he is, suddenly managed to remember him and grabbed his hand and pulled him out of the speed force and then suddenly retconned. So now we have Wally back and he's running around with the original Titans and god if anyone wants to explain that one to me that'd be grand. So then you have the debut of the much younger Wally West. This is the dude that was meant to replace the original Wally West and people didn't really kind of latch onto him as much as they did their original Wally. But this is a brand new Wally West and if this was a Marvel comic it would have all new plastered all over it. And now that the original's back, this is supposed to be the cousin of the original Wally West? It's probably best if you just don't question it. However, despite the weird random continuity issues that they seem to be having, this has genuinely been a really good, really nice, really interesting story surrounding the new Wally West. And Barry's been his mentor, it's been a really nice little dynamic between the two. It's just been a really well written, like nice little adventure. For the most part, Wally has no idea who The Flash actually is, even though Barry Allen is actually dating his auntie. And speaking of Barry, I mean speaking again because I mentioned him previously, he's, so he's the main character of this. Despite the fact that there are three Flashes, he is like without a doubt the main focus of this book. And don't get me wrong, with all the whole Wally's thing going on, like, he, his story hasn't taken a step back, it's still been a mile a minute. The series begins with a massive storm that is basically the same one that gave Barry the power of the Flash in the first place, and this spawns a load of new speedsters. Naturally, upon finding out that these people have power, they obviously want to do something heroic, so the Flash creates this little kind of, I guess like a weird community centre of Flashes, and he trains them. But of course, with the spawning of new heroes, there is obviously the spawning of new villains. <laughs> or villain, to be more accurate, as we see the introduction of Godspeed. His, his identity is a big twist, so I won't reveal it, because I, I, I was genuinely shocked by this. I, I didn't see it coming, so I want you to have the same experience. But this is a nasty dude, and his powers involve, obviously, he's a speedster, but he also has the power to siphon speed force from other people, which is quite convenient considering all the new speedsters that are in Central City. Once this arc is done and dusted, we basically have the return of the rogues, which is Captain Cold, Heatwave, Mirror Master, Golden Glider, and Weather Wizard. It's a fairly basic arc, but it's fun. It's a, it's there's a bit of a twist on it that just this this whole series just is just twists and turns, and it's quite a basic story arc. However, you can't really go wrong when it comes to the rogues. They're always going to be interesting. But then after that, you get the the meat of the series. You have the Flash's like undoubtedly biggest villain, which is the Reverse Flash, which from an outside perspective sounds a bit ridiculous. Like if you ever said the name Reverse Flash to someone who doesn't read comics or doesn't watch the Flash TV series, it's just going to sound stupid. But what makes this arc so interesting is that you actually get to delve into the origin of Reverse Flash, which is something I never knew. I, I don't know if it's ever been kind of talked about before, but the stuff that they go into, I had no idea that that's kind of like his motive, essentially. Again, I won't spoil because I want you to read it. But this story has only just recently concluded and the aftermath Barry is still kind of dealing with and again, I'm not spoiling anything. Although, to be honest, if you look at the front cover of any recent Flash, you'll 
you'll kind of be able to get a, like a, you'll probably be able to gather what happened. But in conclusion, this is just a fantastic story. It's fantastic storytelling, and I've been hooked ever since the first issue. I, if you're at least a little bit interested in the Flash, I'd say genuine. Just, just pick this up. Pick up at least the first trade, and see how you get on with that. And that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, give us a cheeky like or a dislike if you didn't. And subscribe if you want to see more. But until next time, stay handsome.